Well, the truck's having problems, so I gotta use the motor home to move this trailer for the next project here at the shop. It's, it's awkward. But that does mean that this luxury RV is a shop tool and a business expense. And because I upgraded my camera, I can line that up pretty easily. Much better than that camera that came from the factory. Alright, I'm gonna call that good now. Something of a blast from the past, uh, but I don't want to do this job in the sun. I gotta get it over into the shaded bay right there, and I'll try to explain everything in a second. This is a very long vehicle to try to maneuver to say the least but i just can't be in the sun doing this job for the next eight hours all right i think that's about perfect and i never want to do that again if i can help it so what are we doing today and why did i call it a blast from the past well the first thing is we haven't seen this before but the owner of this is a pretty long time customer <laughs> You guys will remember about four years ago I did a very quick solar video where he provided the kit <clears throat> so we're going with the Renogy system they've actually been reviewed pretty well and we're gonna do another solar installation on this car hauler but the Renogy kit the owner uh, purchased for me already I'm gonna be completely honest that really the only real reason why I'm even gonna do this video is because in that video which I showed you how to put like 300 watts of panels in everybody was very upset with the way I was uh, flinging around the owner's stuff all the connectors I you need for it even has a Bluetooth module I was uh, gonna make a video on this but some of the audio got destroyed uh, and their panels and they're like I you'd never get work from me and I'm petty enough to make this video to prove that that uh, customer is still using me and used me in between this job and the previous job and he wants to do a, a hybrid between the previous jobs I did and this one. Now we have four of these Renogy panels and these are looks like 100 watt panels. So that's 400 watts of solar which seems very excessive for um, one battery that is installed on this car hauler I mean there's room for another one maybe they want to upgrade down the road I don't know but let me see if I can't sit down and walk you guys through the plan because I'm sure some people have utility trailers they want to add solar panels to and car haulers that they want to do something else to and I'm gonna to try to explain what I did in previous uh, installs for that customer so on this hallmark car hauler trailer I'm gonna be installing 400 watts of panels on the roof uh, at least currently just to charge up that battery over there keep it maintained but on this previous video where I installed 300 watts of panels on his toy hauler he had me come back later to install a system to charge up the uh, side-by-sides that he kept inside the toy hauler when it was in storage because he always came back to those uh, uh, side-by-sides having dead batteries so he wanted to use the solar that I put on his toy hauler to charge up or trickle charge the two side-by-sides that he had inside the uh, fifth wheel. I didn't share that experience with anybody, but because the system already existed, rather than putting a new solar system on, uh, I just installed an echo charger to use the uh, two side-by-side -side batteries as an auxiliary battery. This one would charge those batteries if the uh, fifth wheel batteries were fully charged. It was a workaround that I didn't know if it was gonna work or not, but apparently it did work. I hadn't heard back from him in a year or two, so I didn't know if it even worked or not, but to my surprise, not only did it work, but he wants to do a very similar setup with the car hauler here, except instead of having side-by-sides uh, and other toys, he's gonna have uh, probably two cars in here at a time. And because we're doing this from a fresh install, this is the idea that I came up with. Zamp does have a solar charge controller very similar to this that can be set up for two batteries, but it didn't make any sense to me to do it that way. So what I'm gonna do, so what I'm gonna do is basically make two solar systems in here. Uh, one using, I think three panels that this will actually keep the 
uh, trailer battery charged up and if he wants to add more batteries he'll have 300 watts of power for that and then I'm going to add another solar charge controller to run off of one 100 watt panel on its own circuit to be a trickle charger for whatever vehicles are going to be back here. So I have a whole assortment of parts for doing this. The whole key to the system, why I have two solar charge controllers and why I used this on the previous setup, is that I don't want the trailer batteries to make the car batteries go dead and I don't want the car batteries to make the trailer batteries go dead. I'm trying to keep all the systems isolated from each other while utilizing the sun to maintain the batteries on the roof. So my plan is to make a couple of harnesses and outlets to plug into and then these harnesses right here will be connected to the car batteries they'll have their own fuse protection on them and then you, you want to charge up the cars you would just plug in this harness right here which will be plugged into this outlet or 12 volt plug right there inside the trailer I hope that makes sense. If not, we'll work through this together. First thing I need to do is just get on the roof and install the solar panels. Now, let me try to read everybody's mind right now. What I know a lot of you guys might be saying is 100 watts for two car batteries to maintain. It's kind of overkill, isn't it? Why not just get a simple 15 watt battery maintainer, throw it on the roof, and then plug it into the vehicle in the car, uh, in the trailer. Uh, I do the same thing and I'm thinking the same thing, but that's not what I was asked to do and this was the request that I was given So we're gonna do it this way. You guys can do it differently So even though it does feel like I'm doing nothing but solar videos This is not a solar video I intended to make But I thought it'd be interesting for people to follow along because this is not standard RV uh, solar installation or home solar installation but kind of an interesting take on a utility trailer with a metal roof that. A little bit of issues there, and these are a lot scary to walk on, so we have to figure out where we can mount these safely because these roofs are very, very thin and they move around a lot. You can only fill, well, you can actually see the dirt where the supports kind of are on the roof, so you need to figure out where to aim for those and where to put the feet. But once I do, it's pretty straightforward. You got the uh, Z brackets or the feet right there. Decide which hole you want to use. You can use it on the side too. Then we'll just through bolt it underneath using the washers and the nuts provided. So I've done my measurements. Looks like the trusses are about uh, 16 inches on center. I'm going to put a foot here and a foot there on all the panels and they'll just be lengthwise the entire front here. So you just through bolt it, get a wrench, uh, and then just tighten them up and do that on all four feet. So now these panels have a open circuit voltage of 24 volts and a charge controller that it came with maxes out at 50 volts. Right there so max pv input voltage 50 volts so i'm just going to keep all these in uh, parallel so positive 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 negative 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 and i'll just be using some y connectors to do all that of course one of these panels is going to be all by itself as a 100 watt panel for the other charge controller if i were to put these panels in series uh two of them would be about 48 volts three of them we'd be way above 50 volts at uh it's the math 72. so i used a marker and i laid out where the two rafters the trusses that i'm going to go across into are that should be the center line of them it's kind of easy on these metal roofs you can just kind of like put some pressure on there you can see the edges of both of them all right so that's basically the layout right there and just like with the first video i did years ago we're just going to stack the feet on top of each other to save extra holes in the roof uh, if you look over here, these holes actually straddle the truss, so I'll just be drilling new holes right in the middle. That's a nice thing about that. And then I'll just use um, butyl tape underneath the feet. And I've had some pretty good ex uh, experience with this uh, universal ultra uh, sealant from Dicor. It's a lot more silicone-like and seems to do it much better on these metal roofs than Dicor. Dicor does like to split 
because there is a lot of movement on these roofs. So I'm going to go with this on top and that underneath. Now the structure on this utility trailer is steel and we'll just be drilling new holes and putting the screws in. Like I said, we're stacking this down. First thing I'll do is get us all set up. Then I'll pull all the screws back out again, seal underneath, seal on top, drill some holes and drop some wires. And then you'll just come in afterwards and remove all the excess butyl. All right, so you should be able to see the butyl tape underneath. I have decided to switch out to these longer self-tapping screws. And before I put sealant over the top, I'm going to wire this thing up so I don't get wet sealant all over my hands and my knees as I'm trying to route the wires. So this will be the one panel by itself, and these three will get tied together using um, some white connectors similar to this. All right, so this is going to be a little more complicated than I want it to be because all that I was given in the kit were uh, wide connections with two to one instead of a three to one. So I have that panel, that panel in parallel. So these are the positive leads. These are the negative leads from those two panels. I made up a cable to go from here over to here to link up with the negative on over here, meaning this would be the main negative because these are all in parallel, negative, 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 right to there. And I just made up another cable right here. Just have to make sure that you're doing this all correctly. These MC4 connections. Uh, the plastic might be female, but the metal pin is male. And then the uh, plastic might be male, but the uh, metal pin is actually female. So it gets complicated. You want to make sure you're not re reversing polarity and damaging the panels. Make sure you keep it positive to positive to positive. I mean, is this the most ideal way of doing it? Probably not. Maybe a combiner box, but this is a pretty small system. So this is the positive. From those two positives on that panel, this becomes the positive. That goes to the positive on this one. So another two-way combiner. So now this is the main positive and the main negative. And from here, I can just run a cable down to the inside to the regulator. This would be the standalone. We'll have two cables running from here down to the regulator. I will say it's a lot more difficult to run wiring through the roof on these. The cross members are a little bit difficult to get to. And there's all metal, so everything's gonna be tight. But I think I got this one started. I'll get the next one going. Ideally, they have these uh, corner cable runs. If I wanted to, I could have got there, but I don't know. I don't like seeing wires, exposed wires. I could have put some conduit for it to go down, which would've been a lot easier. But because, I mean, these walls are hollow, easy to run wiring through, except there's a big door right here for the generator door uh, compartment, and there's no real easy way to run down. So I found a channel over there, and I traced it up over to here. And hopefully you can see that satellite or the solar wiring that I just fed down. I'll feed the other one down. And then hopefully you should be able to see the other end of my... Uh, uh, fish tape sticking up right there. I'll tie everything to that and hopefully I'll pull it down through there And we'll set up the regulators down here right next to the battery and we'll be at the home stretch So so far this is the hardest part because these were not set up. I had to actually drill an excess hole right there just to get access All right guys, I can tell you That was not a lot of fun But I did get the four wires routed up through there now, the rest is downhill from here. So I fed these wires down. I kept them bundled together in pairs. So this one right here is going to be going to the smaller charge controller. And this one I have marked with the blue is for the bigger array, the 300 watt array. So this one will be going to the uh, solar panel input on this controller. And from there to the batteries. And the smaller one will be mounting over there too. Go to those wires right there, the solar panel, then batteries. They'll be um, wide into here. And then on the other side of here, I'll put the uh, plugs so they can plug in the uh, vehicles. Be concerned about it. I have not connected the wires up here yet. So that one's still open. And that one over there is still open. And I haven't sealed anything down yet because I have to take things apart. I don't want to deal with. Uh, wet sealant yet so 
that'd be the last thing I do. Now I didn't sign up to rewire the batteries, but I don't want to tap off. We already have uh, five taps on the battery, so I need to combine probably a couple of these to make more sense. So I'm going to take these off and combine them to one ring terminal. So three of them down to one, put that on the positive, do the same thing on the ground, and then this will be the uh, power going to the controller with a fusible link, probably about 20 amp or so. All right, when I bundled those together, I uh, taped off the positive end, so I knew which one was positive, because it's difficult, because it's the same color. So I just need to connect these up. Now I do have the instructions right there, but if you take off this back cover right here, it'll actually tell you positive. Uh, PV positive, PV negative, battery positive, battery negative. But I wrote it down there so I wouldn't forget either. So now I just have to do that. All right, so I don't have the fuse in the uh, battery. And I haven't hooked up the PV connections on the roof. Uh, this did come with a Bluetooth module so the people can download the app. It's going to be plugged in on the back here. It's going to be hard to do once it's mounted against the wall. Alright, this will be the other PV. Go to there. And battery. We haven't hooked up that yet. Because I have to make a harness go from there over to here. And again, I'll have to have some overcurrent protection on it, too. Oh, this seems like we go to places in to put these plugs. There's support right there, so at least one screw will get to screw into something. It might have to be a little bit bigger. All right, cool. One more right below it. All right, so now we got those outlets right there. I did put the positive on the outboard side, and there's framing going all the way down there, so they should be on there pretty well. So the idea would be, this is a 16-foot harness, so I got two of them. If you wanted to charge your vehicle that's being stored in here, you would plug in the harness there. And then this other end, all right, more than long enough. This would be permanently installed in your car on the battery. It has an inline fuse holder, and this would just kind of like stick out the hood, however you want to run it. And you would. Red is still going to be positive, so it is going to be specific. And then the car vehicle would get charged off the solar charge controller that we installed for that 100 watt panel. This is set up for two vehicles, so I have another harness another battery cable that would have to be installed on the vehicle. And there is some concern that when we're tying those two separate batteries together with this harness right here, they would back feed and balance each other out. Um, I did have a thought that I would add some complications to it by adding some diodes to completely isolate each battery from each battery. And I'm also not too positive that the diodes would prevent the uh, charge controller from operating and charging the batteries. Uh, I don't want to uh, overthink everybody's application. It would be on the end user to utilize the equipment correctly. And if they find that one battery is drawing the other one down or this isn't working, they should unplug it. And furthermore on the subject, uh, I know there's a lot of people that would say that if you have solar hooked up to the controller without a battery hooked up, you could damage the controller. Uh, I've never ran into that being an issue. Uh, I don't know how often cars are going to be stored in here, how often they'll be disconnected or connected. Uh, that's going to be on uh, the end user. I mean, I could put a disconnect down here. It's a 100 watt panel, it's, and I don't know that anybody's ever going to reach in here to connect and disconnect the uh, solar panels. But I will bring it to the attention of the uh, customer. All right, so I have it all wired up over here. We just split off of the positive lead and the ground lead right there. I'll tape it up, secure everything. It's time to hook up the solar panels, test the system out, and seal it up. So on the 100 watt system right there, if we were to have a true 100 watts at 12.6, that's going to be about 7.5, 8 amps. So 15 amps should be good for a fuse protection. 
This wire is 12 gauge, it can handle up to about 30, so. Remember, fuses only exist to protect wires from overheating and shorting out, not to protect components, because overheating wires is what causes fires. And I know it doesn't really matter because there's no battery hooked up to this panel, but go ahead and plug that in. And at the very least, we can see we do have PV. So I did wire that part up correctly. What's going on with it? So even in this really low sunlight, we're getting about 20 volts. What I guess we could do is I can grab one of these old batteries over here. I guess I could grab both of them. That's a lot to carry. I can grab one of these batteries. Yeah, so right now I just have uh, the leads hooked up on there. There's no fuse in the fuse holder. Battery voltage is 10.6. Uh, so now I'm going to hook up a 10 amp fuse. And I suspect not much is going to change because we're not putting out a lot of power. Uh, let's see. The battery light did turn on. And be damned if we aren't actually charging. Not a lot, but it's pretty impressive, right? When you consider her in the shade. So that's gonna do a pretty good job of maintaining a battery for a car. So that does work. And of course, if I come over here and I unplug it, look how fast that's dropping down. Try to the bottom one to make sure that one's working. Alright, starting to come up. And battery light is still red, but we are somewhat charging, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and check out what our battery voltage is on the trailer battery first. It says that it's 12.36. Alright, and I'm going to put in a 300 watts divided by 12.6 is about 23 amps. So we'll just go with a 30 amp. Right. This did come up showing 12.2, I guess, volts, even though my meter says 12.3. Bluetooth module turned on. I just need to get on the roof and connect the wires. Connected. Connected there. Well, it's not much, but it is coming up. Let's see, what does this say? But now 0. 0.6 amps. <laughs> Again, not too bad, all things considered. It is showing that it's charging. Put that cover back on. And that one back on and I guess the system's pretty much installed we are even charging there it's pretty cool so we got two solar charge controllers one for that battery and the other one for car batteries on the inside now I'm still gonna be using this Weingard CE 2000 cable entry plate just like I did in the first video I did when it comes to solar to screw this down there's gonna be a gap and there will be some movement right there so I do want to make sure I'm using a uh, more flexible sealant than Dicor when I put it down. But now the downside of a metal roof is that this edge is a big razor blade. So I will just use some loom to make a little bit softer edge on the opening. All right, just like that, so that should be a little bit better. And this will just go over the top once I seal it all down. Now Hallmark uses more of a urethane uh, roof sealant, but you can still see because the roof's moved so much, it does still crack quite a bit. It's another reason why I'm not a huge fan of converting these cargo trailers into RVs or talking about how metal roofs are the best roofs out there because I can't say they are the best roofs out there. Every roof has their right sides and the downsides but these do have a lot of movement on them so that's why I still had to add aim for uh, framing on the roof itself because uh, yeah I could mount to the sheet metal but the whole sheet metal is going to come loose and that's not a lot of threads for the screws to hold on to. 
and these can be quite loud in, in hailstorms and rainstorms. But just like in previous videos, I'll put this down and I'll draw a line around there so I know where to put sealant. Just like that. And I did have to make a bigger hole than I wanted to, but they needed it anyways to keep a, a hard edge against the wiring. So as I'm wrapping up this job, there's one more thing I do want to point out. These kids come with these screws. These are hex-headed screws that have a vinyl gasket on it. So hex-headed screws already hate being on a roof when they're under sealant because it always jams up your nut driver. The vinyl gasket is going to be exposed to a lot of UV and sunlight, and I don't trust those not to fall apart. And these are not the highest quality fasteners. They tend to strip out pretty easily and the heads break out too. So I don't like to use those that came with the kit. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm using the Dicor Ultra Seal. This isn't an acrylic sealant, it's more uh, silicone based. And it doesn't tend to crack as much. It's a lot more like Nuflex 311. And because this roof is going to flex quite a bit, I'm going to go ahead and utilize it a lot more. But this roof definitely has its own issues going on. Uh, lots of uh, cracking. That's why even it's a metal roof, they still need to get on the roof and inspect the roof. Now it doesn't level out quite as nicely as the acrylic stuff does, but I still do want to... Make sure I don't have any voids in there. It will smooth out quite a bit. Now because this is screwed down to the frame, this is a little bit lower than the surrounding area, so water will puddle here. But that's another one of those design flaws of cargo trailers. And then again, because we overlap the feet, a lot less holes in this roof. The lap sealant on top, like I always say, it's just liquid flashing. It's not there to really seal anything, just to redirect water. That's why we put beetle underneath there, and because we went into framing, it's gonna be pretty good gasket material. So with that, I think this job's pretty much done. I just need to go ahead and get it back in the sun, now that it's sunny. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing parked in the sun, and do one final test. That looks pretty cool. You can see the solar panels on the roof. So the trailer's been baking here in the sun for about an hour and a half now. The clouds are staying above the superstitions back there where they normally stay. And we have a nice, bright, clear skies right now. One final check here. I still have this battery hooked up. This battery's up to 13.1 volts. see how fast it drops because these batteries are no good anyways that's why they're laying out in the field all right so we're already down to 12.6 yeah so you can see it's dropping pretty quickly so I'm gonna call that part successful um, I have the Bluetooth module hooked up to the other one so rather than go through the hassle of using a meter on it let's just go ahead and log into the app we uh, got our Renogy Bluetooth, so add something, add a device, confirm. Oh, that took forever to connect, huh? Alright, so we're seeing 20 volts from the panels, charging at 12 point, or 2.9 amps, and our battery is at 100%, 14.2 volts. So I think the system's working. So I'm going to call this success. I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in because when the customer comes to pick up, they're going to want to be able to see what I'm talking about and how to hook everything up. Now, I didn't mean to have all this solar content on my channel. It's just a throwback to the first solar one I put together as a quick little kit to kind of show how easy solar is to do. There are a lot more things I'd like to do. Just solar is becoming pretty popular in the RV world and everybody keeps asking me to do it because I keep making videos about it. I do have at least three roofs I have to do next, but I'm not fighting to do roofs in the middle of summer like I did last year. That one almost killed me last time. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. So...
I didn't share that video. Or... You know, it never fails. You make a solar video and it gets cloudy. And now it started raining. All right. Not that I'm unhappy about the rain, but I am glad that I moved uh, the trailer over here. I was for a second getting upset, but now that it's raining, I'm not upset anymore. Like, out of nowhere. One more. Just another cynicism stepping out. You can see the metal's loose. I'll tap. Use just a little bit of this and advise my customer.